<laughs> but I've been, uh, I've been playing around with posturous, and I used to do a lot of crisis communication. I worked for the state health department up in Indiana and was responsible for crisis communication. And the last year and a half, I've been looking at how can you use social media for crisis communication, and I found posturous, and it's posterous.com. And it's, it's basically an email submission platform. You, mail, you email in your posts. So somebody could take a picture of me right now and then email to their posturous blog, uh, and it will attach the photo, put it inside the blog, and then the body of the text, uh, or I'm sorry, the body of the email becomes the text of the post. The subject line becomes the headline of the post. And this is the really cool thing. Posturous will then turn around, and you have to have set this up. The posturous will put any photos into your Flickr or Picasa account. If you attach a video, it will push it out to your YouTube account. So you don't even have to upload it and then embed it. It will upload it to your posturous blog and then push it out to whatever network you've told it to. I even have mine that anything I send to my posturous blog also gets sent to my work blog, which is problogservice.com, P-R-O-B-L-O-G, service.com. And, uh, and so I took a, a photo this morning when we were all upstairs in the big room and then sent out a quick email. And within two minutes, it was, it was on Posturus, and within another minute, it was on the pro blog, blog. The photo was stored safely in Picasso, so I deleted it from my phone, so I didn't have to mess with that. But it's an easy way to work something in. So anybody who's a, a food blogger can take the photos of whatever it is they're eating and then put those up, put up quick notes. Uh, if you're out, you know, if you're out with family and you want to take photos and, and tell your, your friends about it, use a posturous blog and, and uh, distribute it on the different channels that you're using. I've become a big fan of social sharing. <coughs> Partly because of its link building capabilities, but because it also just brings me a lot of random users, people who aren't going to find me any other way. And if I do a good job at what I'm doing, those people stick around. They come back again and again. And I've gotten lots of new readers and, and lots of regular readers just because of things like StumbleUpon. Uh, I also use Dig once in a great while. Delicious is fine. Uh, I haven't. I haven't put as much energy into those to really get any kind of benefit, but I, every time I write a, a humor post, I, I'm a humor columnist for a few papers up in Indiana, and I republish my columns on my blog, and once those publish on Friday mornings, first thing I do is I stumble those and put those out uh, on StumbleUpon. And it's a, how many people use StumbleUpon? A few of you, how many people use Firefox? The thing I like about Firefox is just all the plug-in functionality and StumbleUpon, uh, among other things, is a great, it's like the most fun time waster you're ever going to use because it's a plug-in to your toolbar. And you tell StumbleUpon, these are the things I like. I like, you know, I like photography, I like art, I like Celtic music, I like cooking, I like you know, travel, I like this and that and the other thing. And you tell it that. And then it associates your little button on your Firefox with your account. And when you've got some free time, you click the button. And it will take you to a random site that has been tagged with one of your interests. So if you like Celtic music, it will take you to some band who has a, a web presence that they stumbled their site. Or it will take you to a, a list of radio stations that play Celtic music. Or it will take you to some visual photography site. All photography is visual, I guess. Uh, <laughs> some visual art site. So whatever it is you said you like, it will take you to some random page. And it's a great way to, to start surfing the web again. Uh, we stopped surfing, we started searching, but this is a great way to kind of randomly find something kind of cool. And so I post my humor columns on StumbleUpon, and occasionally I will even get their front page. So anybody who goes to StumbleUpon.com one of my posts will land up there, and I really start getting some traffic out of that. Um, I noticed one day uh, when I was looking at my, uh, my analytics that I got a lot of traffic out of Google.se, which is Google Suite. And what they had done was they found a column that I had written almost a year earlier about a guy 
who broke up with his girlfriend, this was in some relatively small town in Australia, broke up with his girlfriend Burma Shave style. You remember the old Burma Shave signs? There are always four signs. The last one said Burma Shave. And, and this, the signs were something like, Jenny, I love you. You've made me the happiest man on earth. Will you marry me? Just kidding, I'm breaking up with you. Get your stuff out by the end of the day. <laughs> and so I wrote about this guy and put it on my, on my blog and forgot all about it. And then I noticed that I had a huge spike of traffic this past August and couldn't figure out why until I realized that it was Google Sweden. And for some reason, and I couldn't, I couldn't get to the site to figure it out, <coughs> A bunch of Swedes wanted to hear about some guy in Australia that broke up with his girlfriend. Wow. But the second biggest source of traffic at the same time was from StumbleUpon. And it was, uh, I think it was about a woman who was thrown out of a Starbucks. Did you hear she, uh, what was it? She wanted a bagel. And they wanted her to order it a certain way. And she said, I don't want that. Just give me my damn bagel. And, uh, there's a whole big hullabaloo that they, I think they eventually called the police <laughs> to, get, to get her out of there. And, and so you only got the one side of the story about the big evil giant corporation who you know, picks on the poor woman who just wants a bagel. But I think there's more to it than that. But still, that got me a lot of traffic. I'm still getting a lot of traffic now for a, uh, for a, a post I wrote called The Seven Different Types of Humor. And still get a lot of traffic off, off of StumbleUpon for that. So. If you are writing any kind of regular articles, at least try StumbleUpon, StumbleUpon.com. <coughs> and if nothing, it just gives you some random traffic of people that, that will find you because you're writing about whatever their interests are. And if you're doing a good job, they will stick around and they'll come back. The main lesson here is, is not that you write to appease Sweden. <laughs> I'm not really worried about the students and what they're doing. Number eight, the biggest, the biggest way that I've gotten uh, retweets on Twitter, uh, Twitter is I ask for them. And what I will do is I will pick a few friends and I will ask them through a DM, would you please retweet this? And it, I don't do it that often. I do it maybe once every couple of months. Uh, Jason will do it uh, for me quite a bit. In fact, Jason is the subject of the next slide because every time I ask Jason to do one, my heads go way up. I mean, it's like it's tooling along. I got little foothills and I got a mountain. It's like, oh, that's the day I asked Jason to retweet that. <laughs> so I'll ask Jason, I'll ask uh, another friend of mine, Kyle, to do it. Kyle's got a pretty big network and so, and then I do the same for them, only uh, you know a little more frequently so I don't feel so guilty about asking. But, but there's nothing wrong with asking people to retweet your stuff. I mean, maybe there is, but no one's ever told me, so. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll ask for forgiveness, not permission. Uh, number nine, leave comments. How many people have read Crush It? Gary Vaynerchuk's Crush It? He talks about that a lot. He, he talks about how when he was starting Wine Library TV, he would take a couple hours to write a post, to do a video, and then he would take 10 more hours and go to people's blogs and leave comments. And it wasn't so he could build backlinks, because there, there is some, some usefulness to do that. You can build some backlink traffic that way, but it's not really powerful. Google doesn't put a lot of stock into comment backlinks. But what he did do was start relationships with people. And uh, anybody who was in Eric Blackwell's session first, he talked about you know, being human, don't automate things, you know, just, just start relationships by actually talking with real people as a real person. And leaving comments is a great way to do that. <coughs> you don't do that by going to somebody's website, leaving a comment that says, nice post, good job, and then leaving again. That's not helpful. You can agree with somebody and tell them why. You can disagree with somebody and tell them why. Uh, I think it is okay to leave a link inside a comment if you know the code for it, as long as your comment and that code have something to do with what you're commenting on. 
if you were just leaving it in there to leave it in there, you know, you're, you're, you're talking about a particular bottle of wine on somebody's blog about Napa Valley vacations, that doesn't fit. If they're talking about a particular kind of wine and you like that particular kind of wine, and you say, hey, I, I found this or I discovered this and I know this piece of news and you can read more about it here, go ahead and do that. The other thing, if you don't want to leave the, the code inside the comment or somebody uses a comment form that doesn't let you do that, they will always let you sign, uh, when you sign in, you leave your name, your email address, and your URL. Instead of putting like your generic URL, like problogservice.com, you can put the entire article that you want to refer people to. And so anybody who wants to come along and see who's Eric, why is he talking about this, they can click that and go to my article, my post about that particular subject. So, but the whole point that Gary was saying was he spent hours and hours doing this for months and months and months, and he built up a nice little following. He's got thousands and thousands of people in his network now because he built up his network that way, by being real, by talking to people about real things, and actually leaving thoughtful comments. <coughs> Unfortunately, there's still a lot of people who, who don't get this, and so we get a lot of spam comments on, uh, on our blogs, on our client blogs. That's one of the things I love about WordPress, is that Kismet catches all those and deletes them. And so some people are trying to be clever and, and you know, use flattery. This is great. This is the best post I've ever seen in the world. I'm bookmarking it and coming back here often. I've gotten those. And the first time I ever saw it, I thought, well, that's kind of cool. And I, I was about ready to approve it, and then I looked further down the screen, and here's somebody else with a different name saying almost the same thing. And I thought, well, as awesome as I am, that's not a coincidence. That I don't think they really meant it. So I was a little hurt then, and I deleted everybody. <laughs> But now I see that all the time. Everybody's either using the flattery approach, the generic approach, this is great, I bookmarked it, and you know, it's much better than cats. I'm going to read it again and again. Or they, they're all Russian, because we keep getting uh, uh, the Russian language comments, and I don't know what they're talking about. So. <laughs> yeah, so we, we delete those. And we're getting them on everybody's post, so, or on everybody's blog. We've got. 10 different clients, and I think eight of them all use WordPress. And so one of the things that we do is we manage their comments, and we're seeing these guys all over the place. I had one client who was not, was not well versed in the tricks of the spammers. And so he would get questions like, you know, uh, how do I bookmark this site? Or have you thought about doing this? Or, um, you know, how do I change the theme? And so he would answer these. And somebody would ask him, you know, just one of those generic questions, and he would answer them. But the problem was he had not, uh, he had not put in the, the WordPress key for his Akismet block, or spam blocker. And so when I got him to activate that, all his comments stopped. And he, he asked me, what happened to all these people? They thought I was so great, and now I don't hear from them at all. And I had to explain to him, he's such a sweet guy. I was like, Alex, those weren't real. <laughs> he, was a little, he was a little disappointed. Because he thought a lot of people were reading this stuff and a lot of people liked them. And they, they, they just like you for your money, dude. <laughs> so so <coughs> that's one of the great things about Akisma is that you can find all those blockers. And I don't know why, but those guys just keep trying. And they've automated the system, and that must be what it is. But they'll even keep coming back, and there's no feedback that says, this does not work on this blog. So I wish there was. Uh, number 10, use microsites. And this is especially important, I think, for anybody who's got a local business. Uh, and especially if you've got a local business that people search for you by keywords. We, we push this strategy a lot. We've got a couple national companies that use this as well. But let's say you own a carpet cleaning company. And so, you know, you own it here in Louisville, and you know that you get a lot of traffic off of people going to Google and searching for carpet cleaning, or you could, except your website is Carl Cleans Carpets because your brother-in-law thought that would be kind of cool because it's alliterative, it uses three C's. So Carl Cleans Carpets, and so we're gonna, we're gonna put that as a website, and you're not getting anything because the other carpet cleaning guys are all getting 